not looking at a boot today. Instead, just for today, I'm looking at this leather briefcase or satchel made in New Zealand by New Zealand men's clothing and accessories company, Rod and Gun. How you going? Welcome to Bootlosophy. My name is Tech and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live on, the Wajik people. Today I'm taking one of my few detours from boot reviews to review this old briefcase of mine from New Zealand men's clothing and accessories brand Rod and Gun. I've had this for nearly 20 years, bought from a Rod and Gun store in Tasmania when I was there on business. It's actually held up really well and it's still made by Rod and Gun and still made in New Zealand. I'll leave a link to their website page uh, down in the description below and it's not an affiliate link. As I said, Rod, spelt R-O-D-D, and Gun uh, is a Kiwi brand started in its current form in Auckland in New Zealand in 1987. Although I think the roots of the company and its logo, uh, the English pointer hunting dog, goes back to 1946. Their ethos in providing high quality menswear and accessories is based on their definition of a quality life in long lasting products, going against that fast fashion trend uh, that's been there for the last 30 years. They say that their North Star is to seek less but find more. Nice. <laughs> Following this ethos, they seem, in my experience at least, to find high quality materials from around the world and make long-lasting menswear that have a two-year guarantee. I actually have many pairs of jeans, pants, shirts and jackets from them and I think their designs are timeless in that outdoorsy, casual way. Uh, and the more you wear them, the more you wear them in and the more comfortable that they become. Kind of like a pair of boots really. <laughs> um, today, they have stores all over New Zealand and Australia uh, some of them with wine tasting facilities and based around a hunting lodge aesthetic. In fact, they call their main stores lodges. They also have uh, stores in Europe, in the UK, Ireland, and also in the US, I think mainly in California, where they are often sold in Nordstrom stores. This is the RG briefcase. It's quite a traditional design with a flap that secures uh, with two buckle straps a handle and a shoulder strap. It's handmade in New Zealand with full grain, uh, a deep dark chocolate colored leather sourced from Italy uh, that's over three mil thick in the actual body. The patina and soft creasing and pebbling of the leather has developed over the last uh, nearly 20 years, making it immediately eye-catching. I have had so many compliments when I bring this to business meetings. Uh, it's like an old briefcase that you inherited from your father. The hardware is all solid brass, including uh, YKK zips, uh, and everything else feels solid from the clasps to the buckles uh, and the rivets that reinforce some of the fixings like the uh, handles and the straps. The handle is comfortably wide and lightly padded. The shoulder strap has two pieces of leather uh, and a stitched in shoulder pad, which has the advantage that it, it doesn't slide around when you adjust the bag's position on the shoulder, but also has the disadvantage that if you shorten the shoulder strap too much, it doesn't sit perfectly in the center of your shoulder. On the back side of the bag is a full length magazine pocket that I find very useful to keep files and papers that you might want to get to quickly. On opening the flap, there are two zip pockets in the front, protected by the flap, which you can use to store your you know, glasses, sunglasses, small notebooks, uh, pills, medication, and so on. There are reinforcing leather patches around the panels uh, and on the sides, and up the pockets under the buckles, as well as uh, actually under the bag, uh, where there are these four brass studs to protect the bottom of the bag when you lay it down. Looking inside the bag, you see that it's lined with Rodden Gun's own 100% uh, cotton plaid lining. In fact, the bag is fully lined, including inside the uh, back panel uh, magazine pouch, uh, inside the two front uh, zipped pockets, 
as well as under the front flap. On the inside, between the flap and the guts of the bag itself, is a zipped plastic lined waterproof pocket where you can store, say, cool drinks, uh, where the moisture from the uh, drinks won't get into your papers on the inside. The body of the bag can also be fully zipped up to protect it from weather. There is no laptop compartment, but the thickness of the leather makes me, uh, you know, makes me feel confident enough to put my laptop in there. Uh, perhaps in the case if you want to protect it from any hard bangs on the floor or uh, maybe against the zip scratching it as it goes in. The bag measures 41 centimeters in length, um, 31, 31 centimeters in height, and 14 centimeters wide. And it should fit up to a 14 inch laptop. There are no internal compartments, but they do have leather patch that sort of acts as a two pen sleeve just here. Uh, and next to that is a logo patch and the inscription that it's made in New Zealand. Uh, finally, inside the flap itself is a clear plastic window where you can insert your business card in case the bag gets lost and whomever finds it actually tries to return it to you rather than sneakily keep it for themselves. <laughs> when I bought this in 2005, it cost me over 300 Australian dollars. In those days, a pair of RM Williams uh, boots were around 350 Aussie dollars. They're now 650, so almost double. I'm pretty sure a pair of Timberland yellow boots sold in Australia for just under $200. They were very popular at the time and followed the trends of the time. Uh, they're now about $300 in Australia. Well, the RG briefcase now lists at $1,600 Aussie dollars, <laughs> up over five times. So I am glad that I bit the bullet then, even though the cost then was still a hold your breath while you pay moment. In 20 years, I have never regretted this purchase. It has stood the test of time. Uh, nothing's broken, the leather's never torn, uh, nothing's fallen off, it's been kicked and thrown around and uh, nothing kept inside has been damaged. It's been in the rain, it's been in the back of a Land Rover, it's held all sorts of stuff and nothing has got wet. I have conditioned it once, in 2021, after owning it for about 16 years because at the start of my boot journey then, I, I learned all about conditioning leather <laughs> and I just bought a, a bottle of Venetian shoe cream. <laughs> no conditioner touched this for 16 years before. And yet, the leather has remained perfect, scars and scuffs of the patina notwithstanding. It's developed all sorts of creases and uh, um, a pebbling and the back of it has shined up with sweat and brushing up against my clothes. I do love this bag. Now I know, 1600 Aussie dollars, or 1000 US, or 960 euro, 830 pounds sterling, is a lot of money today. And to be honest, I'm not sure that if I saw it in a store today, uh, and not know how it's lasted me, I'm not sure that I think I could afford it. But gosh, quality is quality. This is a 20 year old bag and still going strong. If this had lasted my father for 40 years, and then he gave it to me and it lasted me for another 30 years, even at $1,600, it would be for a lifetime or more. Gucci and Prada and Bali, their leather briefcases cost from $1,500 to over $3,000, and they're not all fully made of leather. Nor are they, from what I can see, made as sturdily and as durably as this being, you know, mainly fashion trend designs. If you can afford to invest in one luxury leather briefcase and expect it to be around for a long, long time, this is the one I'd go for. Okay, shock horror, 1600 bucks. Tell me what you think. And if you like this review, even if you don't like the price, let me know by clicking on like. And if you haven't subscribed yet to this <laughs> boot review channel, don't worry, I'm gonna go back to boots. So subscribe. Until the next time, take care out there and I'll see you again soon.